round of applause if you think this animal's adorable. Yes! You guys are fantastic. My name's Max Wilson, and for the last two years as an ecologist and graduate student at Arizona State University, I've been living on the Tibetan Plateau studying these guys, the Plateau Pika, an animal you've probably never heard of. What that really means is that for the last two years, everything that can go wrong has. We got this animal stuck on the edge of a sheer cliff. I've been arrested six times, uh, hospitalized twice, attacked by a dog, you know, pretty much anything that can go wrong, it has. But I consider myself really lucky to have this opportunity because for the last two years I've been a part of a team of incredible ecologists trying to figure out what secrets this ecosystem holds. But back to the or, uh, to talk a little bit more about Tibet before we can talk about anything else, the Tibetan Plateau covers about 25% of the People's Republic of China. It's truly enormous. Has an average elevation of 14,000 feet, which is higher than any of the mountains we have here in the lower 48. It's made of a mostly high elevation grassland. But most of you guys don't know about the Tibetan Plateau, however, is that it has so covered with pikas that it was first named the Okatona Plateau, the scientific name for the pika. See, these guys are burrowing mammals. And like any other burrowing mammal in the world, they get a bad rap. The idea is that they dig holes, that livestock can get their, their feet stuck in, they eat grass that livestock could otherwise eat, they increase erosion. And because of this, they've been persecuted over their whole range. And as this is going on, the Tibetan Plateau is falling apart before our eyes. It's literally degrading, turning into uh, deserts as we're watching it. And nobody knows why. I mean, global warming probably has something to do with it. And realistically, overgrazing is the real problem. And these pikas love the overgrazed areas. They live in huge numbers on the overgrazed areas. And as such, people walk onto them and they say to themselves, you know, this is really bad land and there's lots of pikas here. And they must be causing the problem. And as such, the Chinese government for the past 60 years or so has been using some of the most poisonous toxins we know of to eliminate the pikas, to get rid of all of them. Their most popular one is botulin, literally the most poisonous toxin that we know of, been dumped in mass all over the Tibetan Plateau. And just to put this in perspective, over the past three years alone, an area about the size of Arizona has been covered head to toe in botulin. And as this has been going on, we've noticed something strange. We're not just losing the pikas, we're losing a lot of other things. I mean, from wolves to brown bears to Tibetan foxes, red foxes, saker falcons, upland buzzards, black-tailed black kites, and even some little birds like Hume's ground deer, this adorable, oh, that's Hume's ground deer up there, uh, uh, Tibetan snow finches as well. And we've asked ourselves, you know, why is this going on? Why in the world would losing this one species cause us to lose everything? And there seems to be a pretty simple answer, and that's very rare in my field, by the way. Um, you see, there isn't a whole lot for, pike, for anything to eat on the Tibetan Plateau, especially carnivores. I mean, there are gazelles and there are antelope, but those are hard to catch. They're pretty quick. So even huge animals like brown bears are making up almost their entire diet made of pikas. So when you lose the pikas, you lose all the carnivores. And at the same time, there are no trees on the Tibetan Plateau. So any nesting bird that would normally make its nest, its nest in a tree doesn't a pika burrow instead. And this makes the pika what we call a keystone species for biodiversity. They're the linchpin that holds this entire puzzle together. Literally the cornerstone that keeps this pyramid of an ecosystem from collapsing down on top of itself. And see, the weird thing is that the Chinese Academy of Sciences has acknowledged this. They've actually said flat out that pikas are a keystone species for biodiversity, but the policy of poisoning hasn't stopped. So we've been talking to ourselves and thinking, you know, we, maybe we need to frame this in a different way. Clearly this biological diversity argument isn't, isn't making the inroads that we need. So we think we found a different solution. You see, the Tibetan Plateau is the headwaters of all of Asia. 40% of the world's population, four out of every 10 people, rely on the Tibetan waters that come off the Tibetan Plateau for their drinking water. The Yellow, the Yangtze, the Mekong, the Brahmaputra, they all start on these areas. And they're fed by heavy monsoon rains. And when you get all your rain at one time, as you might imagine, it causes flooding. As such, people count on the Tibetan Plateau to absorb some of that water, to let it go slowly over time. So we thought to ourselves, you know, there's a lot of pikas up here. They probably have something to do with this system. They probably have something to do with stopping the flooding that's going on. Maybe it's their burrows that act as funnels, grabbing onto that water, pulling it into the soil substrate, and keeping the flooding from happening downstream, or at least lowering the amount of it that there will be. So we decided to test this. And what we found out is not only is the pika a keystone species for biodiversity, it also helps, the, su helps supply the water to 40% of the world's population, making it, in my opinion, literally the most important animal in the world. Now, there's a lot of different reasons you can care about this, and I think it really breaks down to two things, people and places. If you want Tibet to be the place that it is, the place that we believe it is today, you need the pika. If you want 40% of the world's population to have less flooding than they could otherwise, you need the pika. 
Obviously, I got to thank a couple people before I head off here, guys. My family, my friends, my wonderful fiance Angie, for putting up with me running away for two summers in a row. But also the um, Phoenix Zoo and the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo for taking a chance on our research and providing the funding for it. Thank you, guys. You've been absolutely fantastic.